Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS AH64D video, we'll discuss the laser warning system and how it warns the crews of threats that are lazing the aircraft. You can detect laser threats from 360 degrees around the aircraft, just like a radar warning receiver. When a laser strikes the laser warning receiver, the laser is categorized as either a rangefinder, a designator, or a beam rider guidance. The laser warning system is integrated in the RWR as the combined RLWR, where the radar laser warning system and laser threats are displayed as a snowflake symbol along with the radar symbols in either the TSD or the ACE page. When a laser threat is displayed, audio alerts will also warn the crew of the laser threat type and direction, just like the RWR. Rangefinders show us a snowflake with a box around it. Designators show us a snowflake with a box around it and a dashed line to the own ship. And beam riders display the same as the designators, but with a flashing box. Because the RLWR is limited to just seven symbols of the highest priority threats, the laser threats will be prioritized with the radar threats so that the most critical threats are displayed to the crew. This means that the tank is lazing the aircraft with just the laser rangefinder several radar threats are locked to the own ship where launching missiles at it, the rangefinder may not be displayed if the number of higher priority threats is greater than seven. A few more points before we see this in action. Rangefinders are considered acquisition level threats, designators are considered track level threats, and beam riders are considered launch level threats. And this is how we prioritize along with the radar threat counterparts. Now that we're finally in the cockpit, let's go ahead and set a couple things up first. First, coming down to the radio panel, let's make sure that the RLWR knob is all the way up. Next, let's bring up the ACE page on the MPD. Now we're gonna go to Utility and make sure that the RLWR is enabled. In this first example, let's take a look at laser rangefinder warnings. So as you can see, I'm creeping up on this hill. I'm gonna go ahead and unmask, and there should be a company of enemy armor on the other side, and we'll probably get lazed. So I'm gonna creep on up. Laser ranging. Up on the ACE, you see laser those box ranging. snowflakes, as well as in the ASC. Let's go ahead and get out of here before we get a sable round in the face. You also heard that warning to indicate that we had a laser range finding indication. Okay, now in this example, let's take a look at a beam rider laser indication, in this case from a K50 laser up ahead of us. So first we got the laser range finding indication, again that snowflake symbol, which is coming from that K50. And again, you can see that at the top of the ACE page as well as the TSD. Now, yeah, normally in this circumstance, I'd already have them up the tads and have a hellfire coming his way. But uh, in this example, let's go ahead and keep driving to the target. Okay, launch indication. And now we can see the beam rider indication. Let's come off to the right and avoid this shot. Engine one out. Or Engine maybe not. Out. Engine one out. Rotor RPM low. Engine two out. We also understand that many of you are looking forward to the fire control radar or the FCR for the AH-64D. Now this is being done in parallel by the radar team and they're making great progress. In fact, I'm sure many of you have noticed this in the previews. While it's not planned for the 2.9 update, it will be along after that. We will first release the ground target motor GTM. And this will allow you to detect, track, and engage units. It will also tie to the data link capabilities of sending and receiving priority fire zones and no fire zones between primary members. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.